by himself, very strong at that. And then Lena will be, I believe, your mid in this situation. Again, like you said, it's hard to, how do you actually stop the rebuttal? Mm -hmm. They have a lot of soft, like, defense in terms of root, ice path and stuff, but... Yeah, I, 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 I just, yeah. I have to lean towards EG, though. I, I feel agree. like they've got the late game advantage. I think if they, you know, if they walk it, if they run into each other, and everybody uses their spells, EG just win the fight. I would agree. Like, you just win the fight. You get a double doom off, even just one, it wouldn't matter. Void Spirit's gonna get his spells off. There's a lack of early Tusk damage as well. Like, yeah. it's like the big burst comes from, like, the Lena, and other than that, it's a lot of tick, a lot of, like, slow damage. And yeah. when you have these heroes that don't even want to really play in the fight, Void Spirit arc, they can, like, poke from a distance and instantly get out. They love playing against this type of damage because there's that yep. not hard punishment. However, if Alliance can play ahead, if they, they can get can. some early towers yes. and just sort of crush through the map as we've seen other teams utilize Wisp mm -hmm. and do yep. so, you know, you can just play too high tempo, right? Arc Warden's not gonna be able to get out on map. And if Doom's on cooldown, like you have no fear from this hero. EG suffer in a sense that they're somewhat cooldown reliant and it could punish them. I just yeah, but they are warden the fail safe, the eventual alliance it's high ground. Fine, they're gonna warden. bulldoze their way through. Uh, no problem at all. all. Right. Either that or our TZ arc warden's gonna carry us over. We'll see how they do in game number one. <laughs> Alliance versus Evil Geniuses, a matchup that has gone the test of time in Dota 2, and at least one person has a little bit more experience it than the others, but we're gonna watch FNG give away the first blood before we talk about... Oh no, that's actually second. Oh, so... Okay, GPK actually already got picked off, so... That would uh, that would be first blood for Alliance instead. Yeah, that's... that's All right, worthy trade. Yeah, that's definitely worth the trade. The battle begins. So are we going to have uh, Jakiro mid? We are. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> what, <laughs> what Kyle was saying about running around the map and just closing in the map with the Wisp, that uh -huh. is definitely viable with this hero being mid. I mean, the, the tower pressure coming out from this hero with the levels in his third spell. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be pretty immense. I think they can definitely death ball in this one. So, do you think this is a winning mid, though? Because you, <laughs> Jenkins, we were talking about, like, what is Limp going to be playing? Is he going to be, is this a core IO? Is he going to be playing mid Jakiro, mid Lina? And the conversation obviously came to his mid Lina and how, while he's really good with that hero, it's just not a game winning hero. It's some, yeah, it's, it, it can, it can feel like pretty hot garbage when it comes to the late game and you have this extremely squishy hero with all of your net worth. She never really gets enough items that she's unkillable, but this Shakiro, it's, you know, probably a little bit tankier than Alina, and it actually is a counter to the Void Spear mid. Ramses? I think Ramses might be dead. It's, uh, he's certainly going to be taking a lot of damage over a long period of time here. He still has a Fairy Fire. He can eat another Tango. He's actually got a Healing Salve. I almost think he should have devoured the Melee Creep that he was tethered to. You know, just to slow down that IO. I don't, He's I don't, gonna live, but like, <laughs> is it really worth it? <laughs> what is, is it really being alive? Yeah. Man. You can see the change in the the devour, the uh, the nerf that that got. What oh, one regen? Yep. Yep. It's pretty rough. Yep. That's uh, not a hero you expect to be difficult to cut the creep wave against. I think that's why he didn't wait to devour there because it's like, ah, it's a wisp. Uh -huh. What can a wisp do? It's like, oh wait, he's got he's got a lot of move speed now. He just pokes you to death. Yeah. Well, not quite. All right, get back to the mid. Yeah, this is—is is, is this a game-winning hero? Or is this a game-losing hero, Jenkins? No, I, I, I legitimately think this is this is pretty good. I mean, okay. Like Jakiro as a mid, generally speaking, is. It's, it's not the fastest of here. It's not going to run around killing people. It'll take tower. It's like a Dragon Knight, another dragon. But uh, it, it does counter the Void Spirit. This is what people were doing when Void Spirit was was just put out into the game, was people were picking Jakiro mid as a counter, because it's all magic damage. Yeah. You just spam him with magic, and his shield doesn't do a single thing. And a major lane winner, right? Any melee hero that goes up against Jakiro is probably going to lose. Uh, Hanskin missing out on that LSA. Nice juke there from Crit. He may still die as S4 indeed is able to pick up that kill. Turns that damage back around onto RTZ. Support for support. I don't think either lane really cares too much about that. Both of them get to go back and function as a essentially a courier, a very expensive courier. It's a lot of relationships that uh, go back and forth. I was opening, I was going to open with Limp, basically, and how his extensive history in playing against Evil Geniuses goes back to the days when he was playing in North America. Yeah, I was going to say. He's... And now EG is here in Europe, and he has to play them again. 
Yeah, it's 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 interesting. There's a lot of there's a lot of players in teams like that, honestly, that you've seen in NA or even SA once or twice. And here we see S4 trying to get aggressive on his former teammate in uh All right, S4 in as well. Of yeah. course, he was on EG. Yeah. Yeah, this is a this is an interesting matchup. And something that I had heard that Part of his pickup into Alliance and stuff allowed him to have a little bit more leadership and agency in the team's direction, you know, as a drafter and as a captain, and, yeah. and something that probably was missing when he was on Evil Geniuses before. Yeah, that, that iteration of EG with him on it was... They didn't do too hot, did they? I think, I think a lot of people were expecting a lot more from them. But, you know, that, that does happen. Remember, Universe on Secret sure didn't look so good. It really depends on just, like, how you mesh with the team, personality-wise, what they need, what you need. And the race for that four-minute rune, and, of course, it ends up being top. FNG is going to go for it. The Dissimilate doesn't quite land. The Inkswell completely whips, and Limp going unstunned gets a little bit more damage on a GPK. Crit's going to come in, blocks in Limp. Oh, oh so didn't block him in. He's able to sneak on by. He almost got it. You, hey. can, you can tell FNG's been playing Aghanim's Labyrinth because that's that's why he was so good at dodging that Void Spirit thing. Because if you get hit by the Void Spirit boss in that game, uh -huh. one hit, you're done. <laughs> Those mechanics, man. I, 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 isn't this a, I think it's the second time we've cast together and it's the second time you brought up Aghanim's Labyrinth. This time in record time, four and a half minutes into <laughs> the series. You, dude, it's a game changer, man. You think Void Spirit's popular for no reason? Uh-huh, uh uh-huh, okay. What other heroes are really popular in Aghanim's Labyrinth? Viper's really good, right? Tusk. Every game. Tusk. Every yep. game, yeah. Uh, nice reason. Game. Look at the damage. He's very, very dead here. Or at least I thought he was dead. The snowball onto him, but he still has the fairy fire. That orb of venom might just get the kill. Crit needs that last hit, and he gets it right before the LSA stuns him. Once again, support for support. I think if you're Arteezy, you're kind of happy about this because you're an Arc Warden, so it's like, ah, I'm a late game here. I'm not supposed to be getting kills. And then if you're S4, you're also like, oh, well, I'm an Underlord. <laughs> this hero doesn't get kills. Yeah, Radiant's and you, you get a bunch of damage from kill. being around that kill. You can turn that around and maybe get some extra CS or denies that you wouldn't before. True. Yeah, true. Unfortunately, you don't get the permanent damage anymore. That was a fun patch Yeah. for Underlord players. When you got damaged. I, I felt like there was a very, very small window where maybe he was good, but then he just became garbage again. Yeah, it GBK was. GBK looks like he went in for the kill and now is being punished by Limp. Takes a whole heap of damage and he definitely needs both the bounty rune and may, maybe even the uh, six minute power rune that's coming up. GPK is doing a really good job in this matchup. I think it also goes back to the rune control that EG has in this game. It's making it a lot easier for him. Void mm. Spirit, you can just sit there and get harassed and just bottle up and then die and then bottle up again with the with the rune. Yeah. Radiant structures are fortified. Ooh, he's got the siege creep on Limp. Time to pressure. Yeah, Limp gonna take some tower shots while he has the bottle. Gotta be careful he doesn't take too much though. Just he's trying to keep that siege creep damage. alive. This was not worth it, Limp. Ah, uh, I mean, I've seen plenty of players make that mistake. I'd make that mistake a time or two, but as a mid laner, to try that badly to keep your siege wagon alive and put yourself in that much danger, that uh, that just looks silly. Yeah, you can you can tell like you know what he's going for though. You know yeah. you, you know that he, it's like I'm a Jakiro, I'm supposed to win this matchup, I'm supposed to put a lot of pressure on his tower, and then all of a sudden you give a void spirit a kill and an uh, unfavorable matchup for him, it becomes very favorable very quickly. This hero is so good at playing from ahead against almost anything because you just have so many nukes and disables and, and escapes. I mean, the hero does everything, really. I think that's a skill in Dota in its own right, is just not overreaching and just allowing victories to come your way naturally rather than trying to force things too much. GPK, this is a very natural rotation for him as the Astral Step is going to be able to get the kill on the Hanskin and slows down S4 as well, but with the Creep Wave coming in, the Flux Slow no longer being there. Not an easy dive. So a nice kill from GPK. Unfortunately, there's not really any tower pressure that can amount from that, but he's coming from base anyway, so may as well. Oh, the Doom comes out from Ramses. And with the that as well, they're going to be able to run him down. Now, FNG is going to provide a little bit of heals here, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough with Crit here to seal the deal. Now, there is going to be a lot of heroes still coming in here. The TP out from S4. They don't really have any stuns, right? Not, yeah, not not l like guaranteed stuns. Mm -hmm. you, you need to get kind of lucky. You need to catch them in a pit of malice or something like that. 
There's the pit into the LSA that will get the kill on fly. Okay, nice, nice return kill. I mean, it's it's something. Yeah. I don't. I, I honestly don't think Limp wants to stay mid anymore. I, I feel like if he does stay mid, he wants to stay here with the team. They they need to pressure with this Shakira together. I mean, he's got level yeah. four in his in his third spell. Mm -hmm. Like they want to push with this, right? So you don't want to just sit here and be a a sitting duck. Is that what they call it? Yep. When you're just indeed a sitting duck. Where does that come from? Uh, I believe it comes from hunting, which oh. a sitting duck is probably an easy target, if yeah. I had to guess. I think hunters often consider that pretty inhumane, though. To I mean, I guess it's if it's duck hunting season, but I know it's very looked down upon to shoot a deer out of your car. Yeah, they're like, you know, you have to do the whole, the whole process. Otherwise, it's not fair. So I feel like a sitting duck might, depending on the situation. Anyway, back to Dota. <laughs> <laughs> back to the ethics of hunting, and that's what Evil Genius is doing: is hunting S4, and it's an easy kill, an easy head to mount on their proverbial wall. As GPK continues to look for more. Speaking He's of kind of running around at this point. Speaking of sitting ducks, I, I I honestly feel like Alliance are just sitting in all three of their lanes, like waiting to get ganked by EG. They're playing really responsive here, which I think just shows that they're really confident in this Sven versus Arc Warden late game. But I also feel like with the Jakiro mid maxing out the liquid fire, you probably want to start pushing soon. Yeah. But maybe they're waiting for like Lena level six on Lord to get more levels in his. Pit See, of you're the optimist here because you're saying, oh, it's because they feel confident. I was thinking the opposite way. I was thinking pessimistic. You think which afraid. is that? Well, then maybe not that, but I think Alliance just doesn't have the most natural heroes to rotate around and make things happen. Yeah, they need a death ball basically. Yeah. I, I think that's. I really think that's all they can do. And it's kind of too early to death ball, right? It's not like okay, guys, four man up at eight minutes, you know. Limp doesn't want to move to the side lanes. He wants to pressure that mid lane, but you don't have a four position that that uh, actively ganks the lanes very well, right? You've got a Alina, you know, this that's is true. leading off with an LA st LSA stun doesn't and sound like the the easiest or natural thing in the world. Yeah, like we saw the pit into into LSA. That's kind of the best combo that they have, especially without the, J the Jakiro W. Yeah, I mean, not that that's good setup by any means. Trying to kill the uh, Arc Warden Tempest double, and they should get it here. That's an extra 180 gold, Artiz. You gotta be careful with that, man. You also have to be gold. careful, though, with uh, Nico Baby free farming the bot lane, top of net worth. Yeah. We have seen this guy carry games from the brink alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not alone. There's a supporting cast, but whenever you know, whenever <laughs> the carry does the sick one v five thing, we always we always say he he does it alone. Uh huh. But he's a uh, this guy is a scary carry. I almost feel like he plays better when his back is against the wall. Like he mm -hmm. he fiends the pressure. It's like, yeah, sure. Oh no, guys, don't Dyer's feed. Don't make me one v five. Yeah, seriously. It, it, I, uh, this was a conversation we were having down. the other day. Is like um, the the Radiant's ability of of to clutch. You know, and I think that's something that some players have and others just don't. Nico Baby has it for sure, man. That... Yeah, I think it's a very natural thing for a lot of players. And Nico Baby, he came into the scene and he was naturally clutch. You know? Yep, yep. And he still has it. The, yeah. That anti mage game versus, I believe it was five men. Man, that was nice. That looked disastrous right until the end. Like he, but he still stayed top of net worth. Same thing as this. Radiant like anytime you you see Nico Baby fall. top of net worth, you can difficult supporting cast on EG to play into. What happens if he gets doomed and he can't press the stun? Uh huh. What happens if he gets kited by the Void Spirit? You know, there's Tusk shards, there's Snowball, there's yeah. a lot. Walrus punch is a big one, right? Just that that slight disengage where we could see Crit is trying to get that Walrus punch off. Does manage to do so, but he's gonna lose his life to the Laguna Blade. Now Alliance finally see their opportunity. Evil geniuses have overstepped themselves, and in turn, Alliance will try and take that mid-tower that they've been looking at for so long. Evil Genius is not going to give up that easy, though. They quickly re-rally around that mid-tower and uh, stand strong. Nico Baby, meanwhile, does take that top tower, though. You know, I, I do think that, that that's a pretty interesting play that they just made. This is one thing that I noticed looking at Alliance's games, is they... Uh, they do a lot of things that I would consider fairly risky, but very interesting. Um, you know, they'll, they'll go and they'll put down deep wards without a smoke, just on a solo support, and they'll say, okay, if I die, whatever, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll do a play like this, where they have, ne uh, they have uh, Nico Baby pushing top, and then everybody else pushing mid and making space for him while taking the top tower. Like, I, 
uh, you would think you bring the Jakiro to the top lane, right? This is your tower pusher. What's the first tower you get in a game of Dota? It's all, almost always the enemy safe lane tower. But yeah. they realize it's a Jakiro. He can hit from this far away with the level 10 talent. Yeah. So why not pressure this from afar? It, it's exactly that like the Dragonites, right? It's, it's just like, like the Dragonite. If you have the ability to poke at this mid tower, and you're going to take it eventually, abuse that fact. It's better than Dragonite, honestly, with the level 10 talent. Like, look how far away he is. Hanskin, going to be slowed down by the Flux here. Very likely dead, Hanskin. Gonna be able to turn around, get out the LSA. Nice double soul line into the silence as well. GPK getting some nice damage in, but both of those heroes are super tanky, and as a result, he eventually runs out of damage and has to run down the river. But now Sven's here, and he got the double stun into the ice path as well. A little bit extra damage. GPK, he'll fall. No more mobility left in the tank and alliance. They're just gonna swarm into this mid lane. Evil geniuses. They have certainly lost that tower, and they may be losing more lives as well. Fly eventually dies. Nico Baby just keeps on hunting here because why not this man at, at this point like with an io behind him he's looking kind of unstoppable and he does manage to find ramses here almost into the tier three they're looking for these kills nico baby doesn't slow down just yet but with arteezy making an appearance they're finally gonna leave this place and it's all because nice. they've got s4 probably making the calls go for it guys do the dives i'll uber you out of here oh and they went top two dude that is Alliance is playing crisp this game. This yeah. is really nice. Like, it all starts from this this choice to push mid with the Jakiro and Nico Baby farming top and then coming in once he's got the Mask of Madness and then they Uber out to the top lane. But dude, EG, they know. Yeah, they... Uh, They've got the double doom. They're immediately gonna smoke up and see if they can get that soul bind into double doom. Actually, they don't have the soul bind off cooldown just oh, yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, but... it's a long cooldown at level 1A. Eh? And he didn't really see an opportunity to jump. Maybe they saw the IO, but it's like, it's hard, right? You show with the snowball, he tethers away, then the tusk is pulled out of position. So it's not worth taking that risk. They'll wait, wait for a better opportunity here. Wait for the 15 minute bounty runes. Maybe that's when they can catch Alliance or maybe Alliance will catch EG as they break apart. Look at this nice ward they have up here. They saw that nobody else is there with the Doom, so they're gonna be immediately jumping Ramses. Ramses trying to use that movement speed to get out of here, but he's been caught once. Centaur stomp, the Pit of Malice doesn't snatch him up again. Here comes GPK, he's gonna be able to pull back. Nice grab there with the Aether Remnant, grabbing the primary target of Nico Baby and pulling him off of Ramses. So Nico didn't want to commit the ult there. Uh, I, I think I think with the ult you maybe kill him, but Radiant's just kind of uh, just kind of zoning Ramses off of here. I feel like Alliance probably saw that EG smoke with the ward or something. Just they they played okay. around it really quickly. Like yeah. they, it seemed like they knew it happened. They might have seen it with that mid ward, which EG just disward uh, dewarded mm. at one of the eye spots. I feel like they probably saw that. So a bit of Die. nothing happening. I mean, this that tends to happen when you see people smoke or you just think okay this is an obvious smoke one team yeah. just avoids it the other team doesn't farm because they're smoked and especially like other teams maybe like uh maybe some tier two teams they would have pressured that smoke a little bit harder right we smoke therefore we have to find kills what the better teams often do is just let those kills naturally occur a yeah better, you, right you like smoked for this opportunity to close line alliance into the top lane but then they sniff it out Great. Oh, nice snowball dodge. Does manage to get that off, but it's still looking pretty grim for him. <laughs> and Hanskin with the finishing touches there of the Laguna Blade, not messing around, getting that fast kill. And immediately just running up to the tier two, which is being pushed out right now by GPK. But they fought the wave. Yeah, they fought the wave to make sure that GPK can't kill it, therefore stopping this entire tier two push that was going to come in from Alliance. So heads up play by them. Honestly, heads up play by both. Just yep. kind of reading each other like that. It's funny we were talking about the lack of setup from Alliance. But oh, they know he's here. They spotted the Aether Remnant. Yeah, he's out. It is so e so easy to pressure these towers with the Jakiro. Yeah. You know, this is definitely one thing that... I'm not going to call Jakiro mid underrated. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pretty crazy pick. But I could see it being underrated just because of this... Ability to pressure those tier twos. Relocate's gonna come back in. Evil geniuses, they're looking to fight around this area, and they've got the fresh BKB from Ramses. Hanskin, he's gonna be the first target here. The Dark Rift down from S4 is looking to be able to collect the IO and Nico Baby. Snowball trying to dodge a little bit of time. They actually cancel it. They decide to fight the 
this one. Are they going to be right, though? An ace well stunned on the two. Nice soul bind silence on the two as well. But GPK being controlled up. Laguna Blade trying to jump away from the Pit of Malice. He does jump back to the left hand side. Nico Baby, meanwhile, hunting down some more heroes. Going for a fly. Getting some damage out on the ramps. These evil geniuses. They thought they could take this fight, but Alliance had a nasty trap set up for him. Nico Baby, oh, what a misplay there. His evil geniuses thought they could turn on a Nico Baby, but FNG, he pumps up his primary carry in Alliance. Nico Baby is more than healthy enough to be able to run down the rest. This fly's gonna be up next, and look at this quick TP reaction into the mid lane. They wanna try and keep their mid tower alive during all of this. Man, they're gonna get an 18 minute tier two. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any way EG defends this. this this is just stalling. 18 minutes here too. Yeah. You do not see this happen these days. That means they get this 20 minute outpost. Very nice. Dude, whoever made that call on Alliance to cancel the ult on Underlord, Yeah. that was ballsy. Yeah. Obviously it paid off. So shout outs to whoever made that call. But uh, that, that that's like one of those calls in Dota that you you question it as it's happening. You're like, okay, I'm gonna say that this call was good if it turns out good, but if it turns out bad, it's like, all right, that was a that was a terrible cancel on that alt. Like yeah, that is that, that is so risky because it looked rough. And I would guess with it, with, with Wisp having buyback, it was probably one of the supports. Like we can fight this. Maybe Nico baby because he's the he's the the Wisp tether. Yeah, and he looked so healthy right in that fight. He looked confident. Yeah, he looked like he knew he could go on. He was just always kind of pushing forward, and and they were absolutely right because the the damage just ran out from Evil Genius. It did, yeah, right? it did. Artizi doesn't do anything yet. I mean, it, it's an arc ward. Yeah, like it, it it really doesn't it doesn't do much at this point. So. And you've got the first step of the counter to the Arc Warden in that Aghanim Scepter from the Sven. It's so scary when he feels like he can take any fight against you, and now he's got that catch mechanism. Yeah. I do I do love this matchup, though, just between these two carries, because these are two of my favorite, like, 1v5 carries. Mm. Like Arteezy and Nico Baby are the type of players that even if their team is super far behind, yeah. they're always capable of 1v5-ing with very little support. Oh, Ramses. He breaks the smoke, and I think he actually had a good idea of that. Like, he could have committed more for the bounty room, but he played pretty safe there. Played around his ward that he had on the high ground there. Yep. I like his choice, too, on Ramses to go for the BKB first after the drums. Like, I, I really feel like it in this game, with, with the BKB, he's unkillable until, like, 40 minutes, and Sven has multiple mm. items on top of him. Like, the BKB just makes him immortal. If he gets a blink, he's killable before Doom. But all he needs to do is get the double Doom off. And they are very likely to win fights, as long as it's on some good targets. Yeah, speaking of, I think we've only seen that double Doom once, right? It was in that mid-fight, I think? I don't even think he did it there. I think they, ha mm. they haven't actually got the double Doom off. I mean, it's... I don't want to make Dying excuses for Ramses, but it, it isn't the easiest thing to hit, you know? It... I mean, isn't it in some ways more on fly, right? He's got to get that soul bind initiated right. in the first place, but that's hard position for a five to be in. It, right? right, and then also, it, you know, Doom is often the hero that runs in first as yep. well. So it's like you're just getting stunned up. You're, which is why the BKB is such a good item. So it's it's just having played with this with the Grimstroke. It's sometimes it doesn't. The opportunity doesn't exactly present itself. That'll happen. Despite having. Uh, a lot more map control. They've taken more towers. They only have a thousand net worth lead on Alliance. So while it may look like they're just kind of crushing evil geniuses, EG surprisingly have kept the net worth relatively even here. I feel like the experience is probably a bit more lopsided. But, uh... I, I also have that feeling. It, it, that, that's always my gut reaction after a game looks once very one-sided despite the goal being the same, uh, around the same. So I was like, all right, there's got to be a differential in the experience. Here. Yeah. There usually is. Kills give a lot more experience than last hits do. Aether Remnant is going to be able to get some vision inside the pit. Now, they don't see Roshan exactly. Now, they've got some idea. You see, it's pretty healthy. They don't have to commit here. They can just kind of poke at Gambit. Ooh, Arcane Rune. Yeah, it's that's a pretty a good nice one. one. Very good on Shakira. And he bottled it, too. Yeah. That makes this fight pretty hard for EG. Dude, look at Nico, baby, man. He just made the call. He's like, I'm going up to the high ground, and we're going to catch somebody. And sure enough, they do potentially catch somebody here. Fly, the Yule Scepter is going to be able to buy him some time, but the Aether Remnant was absorbed by FNG, so Nico, baby, was able to stick on a fly and get that kill. He does have buyback. 
And he may just need to. At the same time, Arteezy did manage to get the kill on Hanskin here. Disassim Lang managed to dodge the Stormhammer. Bouncing back. I think they just want to wait out this Fen ultimate, but not let them get too far away. That movement speed, though, they're so damn fast. Yule Scepter into the Aether Remnant. But it's so dangerous to go down into the high ground. Oh, Pit of Malice from the low ground catches Ramses, but now the Sven, he's put himself into a nasty position. He's really far up. They're going to relocate out. He's away. Reset. Not too far away either. Did he get doomed? Radiant Did I see that right? Uh, under no, 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 no. Doom's yeah, okay, still up. Okay. Doom's still up. I was gonna, if, if, that was a, if that was a real kid on the Doom, like, that is the, that is broken. Yeah, and I think that's why Ramses was holding on to it. He knew, he's like, okay, they're probably gonna bail him out here. I don't want to overcommit. Right, you need to wait for the double two. Your Grimstark is about to respawn, so just wait, you know, yeah. just wait for it. So good bailout by Alliance simultaneously. Good discretion there from evil geniuses right. and not getting too excited. I'm being like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, get him. I think if you're Alliance too, you're not too concerned about forcing this Rosh exactly. It's more like, I'm gonna use this Rosh to try to get a, a good fight for us. But EG can't take Roche themselves. Like yeah. they, it's it's going to take them. Uh, the, the, they do have the tusk, but it's still like when Arc Warden is your best he, best hero with tusk to kill the Roche. Like it's going to take a while. Oh, dude, Ramsey's in the position again to break another smoke like that, and uses his movement speed to make sure he doesn't get caught. So value. It, it's it's funny because it, it's some of the plays where nothing happens that are the best plays in Dota. Yeah. Like, literally just standing on the high ground and then running away. That smoke could have been a disaster. You you know who they're smoking for. Who do you go to the triangle to kill? Yeah. You're going for Arteezy. Yeah, right? there's a reason Arteezy hasn't had a whole lot of screen time. It, it's because Alliance has not been able to connect on their ganks with him. They've succeeded in a lot of team fights, but oftentimes what they wanted was kill on RTZ, take some objectives. Yep, it is not happening. He is level 18. Midas in 2020. Okay, so let, let's reverse this. I said early, can Nico Baby 1v5 this? Is this a, the right kind of Sven game? Is this the right kind of Arc Warden game? I think against every other hero but Sven, it is. Uh -huh. And you have the Doom to deal with the Sven. So I think going late, as if, if you're EG, you're you're pretty confident. It, it depends on who has the... Here they come. They're searching. Can they get the LSA? Oh, into the Stormhammer Dispel on the Yule Scepter there. The relocate back is going to leave Nico Baby here. He is. But Ramses is too fast anyway. Did that was an offensive Yules from Lena, right? Did he... Can you target Sven Stun during Yules? I guess you can. Radiance top tower. Yeah. I had no idea. I did that play-by-play -play like I knew that was gonna happen, you know. I, I've never, I, I haven't seen that. I mean, you could, you could use it like the dispel gets rid of the Yules. I knew that. Yeah, but it's that was Lena's Yules. <laughs> that was Lena's <laughs> that Yules. That was his friend's Yules. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, shouldn't he be huh? invulnerable? Wait, how could you dispel an ally Yules on an? Well, I think that actually did happen. I think he just happened to to come down, at just as he did that. You think he's stunned before he was traveling, then the Yules went up. There's no way Sven's stun takes 2.5 No, no. We did, we, he definitely targeted during we, the Yules, but I think he came down. We need an instant replay of that. Yeah. Can we get that? <laughs> hey, meanwhile, they just take Roshan and they got out with a Dark Rift, which was super cool. Yeah, that is really nice. That's a very nice play. Oh, he's going for Bloodthorn. On they Sven. did get the Roshan kill and the Aegis, right? I know they got the Aegis, but... Just wanted to make sure. Limp did have to grab it in the haste, but I don't really think they care too much because it feels like Nico Baby, he's got a second life in the eye. He's got the wisp. Yeah, exactly. So I think it. I think this is fine. Man, I like the. I really like the Bloodthorn from Nico Baby, because it's 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 just gonna let him blow up Arteezy and like one or two hits. That's mm -hmm. that's all he needs, and I think that's all he's gonna get. Once again, going back to, I really think the supporting cast on EG is quite good at kiting a Sven around. So in this in the Sven stun, I think with the Bloodthorn, he can actually kill. He can kill Arteezy. Is there any call to like? I mean, I guess you can, because the IO. I was just thinking, like, it would be nice to have Blink Dagger on this Fen as well, just to kind of, like, bypass all the frontline heroes and see if you can get on top of the Arc Warren, but I'm sure, not sure, sure if you could do that with an IO. I, I also, I feel like Sven gets too late. Look at this trap. They're setting up the Tempest double for them to try and fight around it here. Nico, baby, he already jumps in immediately. He's going to be caught. Look at that damage. Holy smokes, and the old scepter. It stops FNG as he came in to try and save Nico, baby. Now they're going to throw out the Doom because they got the kill. The Wicked Six Streak is given away. Ramses picks it up, and they're going to get an 
extra kill on S4 as well. A big, big trap set up by evil geniuses and the claws at that trap dig into Alliance and cause some serious casualties. That was a nice trap. That does not work against a worse team because a, a team that's not really good is going to focus a lot less on killing the Tempest double. But you yeah. know good teams try to counter Arc Warden by killing the double because it gives so much gold and XP, especially XP. It gives a ton of it. It's worth more than a hero kill often. Yeah, and you don't want to be giving up like tier twos to that kind of attrition. You no know, way, you no need way. to be proactive and Alliance is trying to be proactive. Radiant like that's a, that's a pretty four. next level bait. If that's the real Arc Warden that shows up there, it's so obvious it's a bait. Yeah. If that's even Ramsey sitting up there, it's like, well, He's got a BKB Shivas. That's obviously a bait. Uh huh. But the Arc Warden clone? You think that thing's always on its own, right? Yep, yep. If you're good, if you're good at the game, mm -hmm. that is very interesting. I mean, that's not going to work a second time, but <laughs> very cool that time. But maybe one time is all they really needed because Evil Geniuses, all of a sudden, it, it looks like they are holding a lot of map control and they're also 8,000 net worth up. Yeah, they lost Roshan. They gave up an Aegis to a Jakiro, but I'm not sure if that matters. I, I personally did. Not, I was like, man, isn't this like won't Sven out carry the Arc Warden? But this is beginning to be a little bit of a, a landfall in just the, the net worth difference. So he switches from the full Bloodthorn to uh -huh. BKB, which I think is absolutely the right choice. He is getting way too kited and stunned in these fights. Mm. And uh, I, I think probably. If, if they lose this game and if they go back and, and look at it, probably something that they're going to talk about is we probably should have had a BKB on the Sven before Bloodthorn and then eventually go into the Bloodthorn. I do really like the item just in general, but I think you probably get the BKB first after that fight. I mean, also, you probably say, let's not kill the Arc Warden clone. <laughs> a bunch of heroes, and they got the right one that they needed to. They need to kill S4 as quick as possible, prevent the Dark Bridge, or maybe Alliance can actually win this fight. Never mind. The jump in, the Storm Hammer brings GPK down. Almost they managed to finish him off, but he Astral steps away. Is he going to be able to TP out? He tries to go over the TP. Looks like he's good for now. Limp is going to die to RTC. That's just the Aegis, though. Evil Geniuses blink away. Managed to dispel off that hammer and get away from him. Uh, Ramses, he's just trucking forward. Has to turn around and go for S4 because the threat, the Dark Rift, they're going to try and finish him off before he gets away. But a good save by S4. He gets out, saves his own life. Hmm. They lost their four position and their their Jakiro. And I can't even say two with a serious face at this <laughs> point in time. Yeah, yeah. And this is, you know, this is what you would expect from a Jakiro in the... 30 minute mark. We were talking about Jakiro versus Lina and Lina just kind of feeding and feeling like a support, but yeah. You know, Jakiro has uh, similar issues. Maybe a little tankier, but still still a problem. And Ramsey's in, he's in deep, man. Rain's yeah, he just tower. does not seem to give a damn. You know, I really like the choice to go for the blink dagger on fly. Uh, I would imagine Crit probably has one too or he's going for he's or maybe he's going for one. Um, although he doesn't actually need it. Like, if you think about this, you're either, if you're on EG, you're either Arc Warden or you have some sort of disjoint for the Sven stun. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Void Spirit has tons of disjoints. Uh, you have the Grimstroke who has the blink. You have Doom who's going to get a blink and he has a BKB. And then you've Tusk who has Snowball. Like, and then BKB on Arc Warden. How do you yeah. Sven stun in this game? Nobody's Sven stunnable. Yeah. This is, this is a very interesting way of dealing with it. I was actually talking with Fog backstage and we were like, the only way to beat Radiant this new Sven is to get attack. disjoints. Yeah. Nothing works. You can't go Scepter it because he dispels it. You can't Yule Scepter yeah. it. You yeah. can't force that. You're not going to get far enough away. Yeah. He just goes with you if you force yeah. You literally have to disjoin it. So I think this is interesting. This is the first time that I've seen I, I've seen this happen in a game where the this, this Sven in the last fight felt kind of useless. Like he couldn't get on anyone. Yep. I mean, even Fly, <laughs> like Fly of all people, you figure like, oh, that dead. guy's definitely he dead. Should be dead. All of a sudden he blinks away. Oh, Stormhammer, kind of wasted. And that's exactly why he rushed the blink instead of an Aether Lens into blink or a Glimmer into blink. Yep. Because both of those two items, he's not going to finish the blink if he gets those because he just dies to Nico Baby in every fight. Four man smoke up behind Nico Baby here. There is a lot of EG members here as well. And RTZ can always boots a travel in, especially since they still have the glyph up, so they can protect the creep wave and have him TP in. Dyer, if I'll a fight stand. breaks out, they're gonna smoke to the other side, see if they can take over the triangle here. They're gonna run into Jakiro, Lim. Looks like he just, he has no mobility, right? He's decently tanky, but once he's caught, he's just kind of dead. And uh, Alliance, maybe S4. A little bit too far forward there, thinking maybe he could save Limp. Dark Rift out, should get him away though. 
he's good to go. Okay, I really, I really, I really love this idea as a as a Sven counter. Actually, these disjoints. Yeah. Like this seems this seems really good. I, I seriously don't see how Alliance has the damage to win a fight if Sven isn't able to stun people. If EG doesn't just waste their blinks and their Radiant's BKBs and Tusk Snowball and these disjoints, I don't see how they have any damage on Alliance. I'm seriously concerned for them Radiant's in this game. They need to get some crazy pick off. They're beginning to get clamped in here. The soul bind onto two. They do manage to get the double doom out as well. The Rams already taking so much damage. He's gone straight. They already gone out. But now it looks like they're just trying to retreat back to the fountain. It looks like S4 is going to be left behind. But GPK with this double damage, he really wants the kill on this Fen. And he's so close to getting it too. But Nico Mini, he dodges away from the actual set. They still it's coming in to heal. Coming up from FNG. Now they're turning around. The silence is out onto GPK. And GPK he stumbled a little bit too far. And his hubris, he tries to get the Sven kill. But he's found caught and killed underneath the fountain. And Alliance, they get their chance to respond. Under attack. A little deep, a little deep, but also very nice mechanical play from Nico Baby there. The the way he dodged that, running into the trees, dodging the astral step, yeah. and then he also dodged the dissimulate as well. Like he had two clutch dodges there. Nico Once Baby again. says it's time to go. They just straight up no doom. It's time, guys. Let's try and take a fight. But he also doesn't have BKB. He's taking so much magic damage. He just dies. Uh, He's dead, and that's a die back on the IO as well. So they're both out for over a minute. What just happened? Nico Baby made a call, man, and I don't think the rest of his team was ready for that call. Nobody else was really that close to the triangle. S4, you know, nice block in there. Too bad they can't really take advantage of it. Limp, now gonna have to hold with S4 on his mid Shakiro, something he's played seven times before. No stranger to this hero, but how's he gonna be able to showcase the power of Mijikiro 35 minutes in against an Arc Warden that's stacked to the gills? You know, they are they are doing a decent job at holding the high ground. But with this clone pushing them back to Fountain, it doesn't look like that's gonna last very long. Yeah, now they're getting time to swing on this tier three, but still, they have to back up soon if they don't wanna take a 5v5. 10 more seconds till the Sven is up. Are they going to try and completely disengage? It's looking like no. They're gonna kind of still stick around and see if maybe they can uh, take a fight around here. S4 pulled into an awkward position is this Tempest double. Just keeps on laying out the damage. Oh, he's he's it. He popped the God Strength. He is convinced he can catch somebody here. Pulled in by the Aether Remnant, though. Not able to catch up to Arteezy until... Is he going to dare the high ground? Slowed down a little bit more by the Yule Scepter, and the rest of the team is so far away. I mean, yeah, just bait out the Sven ult and walk high ground again. I mean, you think they can just go right into Alliance's triangle, I think, once the Sven ult is down. I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, Fly's already there. So is Ramsey's. Yeah. They get all the bounty runes as well. They've got that high ground war occupying this enemy space. Roche is up now too. I mean, I, I suppose you just take that, walk high ground. It's yeah. very hard for Alliance to fight this Roche. Jeez would be pretty massive for uh, GPK. I'm not sure, do you do you think you give the Aegis to uh, to somebody other than the Arc Warden? Because I just, I haven't seen Arteezy target it. It's true, but I feel like it's safe to give it to him. I mean, okay. he has 30k net worth, but he has 10k more net worth on the next guy in That's this game. That's true, it would be a little silly not to give it to him. It just feels safe, Radiant but are scanning. It, it is EG, so, you know, maybe they'll go for the, the more high risk, high reward play. Alliance, they know this Roshan's going on. What they may not know is that uh, EG, they just picked up a double damage. GPK immediately going for Limp. Limp, a little bit separated from the rest of the team. They are going to go for the relocate out, but Crit jumps forward and tries to catch some of these backline heroes. And here comes that deal before the God Strength and before the Suns can be laid out. He gets the Centaur stun in GPK. Oh, oh they managed so to get close. him just before the Dark Rift could bail him out. FNG, did you see that? He was surrounded by so many spark rays. They should have just let him instantly die to the spark rays yeah. just, to, just to traumatize him. Ether remnant and like three spark rays, maybe more. Yeah, yeah. That's dirty. It is dirty. That's greasy, I'd say. Oh, he's level 25 too, so he's got the upgraded damage on that. Yeah, yeah. Gem picked up. Okay, so they do get the Aegis to GPK. So they I, feel like Arteezy may not just. I get the I get the logic. Yeah. I mean, I could I could see Arteezy making that call. 
he's got the BKB and Satanic, so he can just BKB travels out if he wants. Anyway, GBK is doing his job. The more confident he feels and just going in, back. right? Because he is drawing attention away from us. Yeah, easy, for sure. So. And, and he has the gen as well. This gives him a massive amount of map control. Just to deny all that vision. Yeah. 14 seconds left on the spin. And the evil geniuses will manage to take that first lane of barracks of the game. 25,000 net worth up as well. They can't just keep on sieging. They've got all the advantages they could possibly hope for. Cheese on crit. Man, they, you're, you're totally right that they want to give the people that are just jumping in and being maniacs yeah. the, the regen items this game. Because they know RTC is just going to be a turret hitting towers, so... I think that's a. I think that's an interesting call. I think that's a cool call. I, I think most teams would probably go Arc Warden just because it's safe. But I, I think this is a a fascinating call. Oh, he pops the ult on Nico, baby. Okay, and uh, oh, geez, Arteezy putting out some serious damage onto S4 there, saved by the Glimmer K, but eventually Tempest double fail, fades away. Alliance, are they going to make use of this god strength? Are yeah, they going to find an opening anywhere here? If you're EG, don't you just wait now? Like, yeah. Uh, well, I'm not sure if they've seen. They definitely seen it now. I think. I think they saw it with the clone. I think okay. they did see it. Because I mean, it looks like they're waiting. Oh, Jesus, as for me, think somebody has to take up the spark race just to make sure he does indeed survive. Nice block in once again. But it's so hard to deal with this uh, Tempest double underneath the bubble. Yeah, man, as, as if it wasn't already annoying to deal with, and now he's got the Satanic. He yeah. kill it twice. Yeah, they're just slowly losing their base. There's so many, <laughs> so many things being dropped on the ground that you can't walk into without taking damage. Ether remnants and spark race everywhere. They kind of have to clear some of them out. That's why you see like yeah. S4, FNG sometimes pop some of them. Immediately cleansing off the sounds there from GPK, catching him inside of the Pit of Malice, but nobody can really follow up. They have to deal with this Tempest double first, which is going to pop its BKB and focus on the melee barracks. It's dead. Alliance, they've got to find a way around this siege. They cannot take it to the face any longer. This is toxic. This is borderline toxic. The way that they're sieging here, it is so difficult to stop this. A, a, a worse team, I think, would run up with all their heroes and try to engage in some sort of fight, but EG, they just make the call to literally oh send God. the clone up over and over and slowly the take the base. The yeah, I wonder if you, like, court. if you could actually track Artisi's damage from just his hero on the enemy heroes, because it feels like he has had very little contact with the enemy, and that's exactly the way you want an Arc War yeah, to be. Yeah, I, I think I think he probably has more damage on the buildings with his normal hero yeah. than on heroes. But this is this is the perfect hero oh, for him. Oh, jeez. I mean, oh, that, that, <laughs> that makes their uh, sieging a little bit easier. Yeah, and that's going to make uh, Alliance's decision making a little bit harder because they're going to be under the gun. They're going to be that timer is going to be picking up a lot faster when a leveler is chopping down your tier three. Fuel Scepter. They're off on the side here in the Spark Rave. They could actually saw some of them. GPK is going to jump in, man, at the silence of two of them. But at the same time, they do manage to get this man right on top of the Arc War. And he has no buyback, too. So already, if Alliance can clean up the rest of these heroes, it'd be fantastic. But it looks like they're a little skittish and going too far forward. As for probably they should be. Both him and Hanskin are going to be caught here. As Ramses is more than strong enough, as is GPK, to be able to run down the rest of these heroes. They're going to buy back on the Lina. Sven wants to be able to go back in. They deal with the Tempest double. Have to deal with that first. GPK. BK, he'll TP out, and the rest of Evil Geniuses is on the run. The relocate. Look how to be able to cut him off at their tracks. Oh, the blink away from Ramses. They're pretty fast, though. Can they catch up to him in time? They can't. If anything, again, they have to be scared of a, a potential turnaround. Crit, you maniac. Yeah, seriously, look at him. They, they're like, they want to go, go without Arteezy. This feels unnecessary. But they're going to try. Oh, blinked in. They do have the Doom up, they do have the Double Soul Bind, if they can actually get it, but Fly, he gets caught in the process of trying to blink it, he does manage to get off the Double Soul Bind though, the Doom, it's gonna go off as soon as the Silence fades away, but he gets stunned up first, the LSA follow up, the Ice Path as well, Laguna blink, can he get it off, he gets off a Centaur Stun, finally turns around, Doom's one, that's gonna be on the Sven, Doom two, on the Jakiro, a smash to the face, and it looks like the Sven could be taken out, but he's saved by the Io, no, he goes down, it's too much damage, FNG couldn't bail him out, GPK is there to make sure the Sven goes down, 
and they're gonna force that buyback. Crit looking to be able to stop Nico, baby, here with the snowball. Trying to stop that damage on a GPK. GPK not trying to get out, though. Stays in with the ace well. Now decides it's time to leave, but an LSA stun catches them into the Stormhammer stun. They have a little bit more. They do. They've got the Pit of Malice, and now GPK is dead for 100 seconds. Has fallen. What a long fight. That was... <laughs> <laughs> well, that could have been a game ender. I mean, shout outs to whoever on Alliance made that call to fight outside of base. I think that. Oh no! They've lost their tier fours! As far! He might just die to Dark Rift. It's not gonna come out in time. The Tempest double is too strong! Radiant they win their fight for the first fight they've won in like 20 minutes, Jenkins, and it comes at the cost of almost all their buildings. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It's so late that the gold deficit is so much that there's going to be a cost to anything. I mean, there's so much net worth on EG to work with. I really like the fact that they're like, we need to fight outside of base. If we let EG get it set up into their sieging formation, we uh -huh. cannot break it. Yeah. So we have to go before they get into that formation. So that was a good call. Gotta take some risks here. The soul bind looks like the IO is far enough away. He does not get tethered to that. He does manage to pull the Sven out of that situation, which he thought was going to be really bad. But now they don't have God Strength. Now they don't have IO relocate. Still. Maybe it doesn't matter. GPK is so essential for these fights. I, I think they need to wait for him to respawn on EG before going. Why do you think he's so important? I, I think he needs to be the guy that's going in and getting things started. If if they want to fight... Well, I'd say feel the same way. They're going to just go up into the high ground immediately. A little bit blind, but it doesn't matter. As you said, GPK is important, so they're going to try and take the fight while he's down. they got to make a few risks. Uh, bring down the Tempest double. 300 gold. So much trouble to deal with, though, as they're down 36,000 net worth. By self right. See, the, the question here is, like, what, what happens when all of EG has respawned and we're not having this chain feeding thing happening? Like, there yeah. is bleeding happening. They are hemorrhaging on EG. And I think that's the only reason that this is looking good for Alliance at the, at the end here. So what do they need to do? Rapier huh. on Nico, baby? Maybe? Yeah, probably. I mean, they just need really fast damage. Looks like he feels satanic. like Satanic is better for him. Yeah. I mean, strength item on a hero that gets immense amount of bonus damage based on his strength. I, I feel like it, it makes sense. Give him sure. the, give, gives him a second life. I don't disagree with the Divine Rapier just because it feels like he needs to pump out as much damage in like two hits. Yeah, like you but were it's, saying, the but. problem is it, it, it's like a Sven Rapier is not a great Rapier here. That's true. If it's it was a, a pretty bad one. If it was a Gyro, it would be a guaranteed thing, but I, I'm not even sure if a, a Sven Rapier is that game changing. Yeah. If he didn't have Bloodthorn, I would say the Bloodthorn is a game-changing item. It's crazy he can just man-fight this. Are you serious? It's satanic. Uh, it's four heroes. Our Cord and Light game is obnoxious, man. You, you look away for a second, it's like, oh shit, our tier fours! Yeah, what's, yeah. What's happening? Is that the real one? I don't know. He's got a cosmetic. I can't tell. They it, look the same. It's funny. They could just lose in so many ways here, right? They could get mega creeps by a flat out siege. They could get bum rushed by five people oh, yep. from oh, evil geniuses. They could get distracted and have RTZ, whether it's his Tempest double or his actual hero, hitting the throne. Die. A lot scared. of ways to lose. Pick your poison. Yeah, that's that's kind of what it feels like right now is that Alliance have to, at the risk of losing some other way, choose how they're going to attack evil geniuses, right? Yeah. Maybe they go outside their base and they get backdoored, you know, and they lose their throne. But uh, the, the, <laughs> the alternatives are not looking any better. Do you want to die slowly or quickly? That, that's the question here. Do you want to let them just whittle away at your base? but there is still hope. They've shown they can win fights. They've shown they can kill this Arc Warden. They can kill him relatively quickly, too, if they can just get on top of him. But that's the true issue here. It's the Tempest Double. Once again, pushes itself up into the high ground. They try and deal with this Tempest Double as quick as possible, but it never happens quick because it's got DKB Satanic. Eventually does die here, but a hefty amount of damage is already on that Tier 3. You know, once again, we have the, the formation. You're, they're just sending all these remnants and spirits <laughs> and waves of paint and all of this bullshit up the high ground. Francis attempts an initiation.
Vision, Soulbind, on to two. Okay, Ramp's gonna pop his BKB, see if he can chase down these heroes with the Ace-12. They do manage to get a stun on two, kill on two. Not enough buybacks there. A Nico, baby, he gets onto the real Arteezy, but look at him, he's getting ripped apart. And he's got no buyback, and that's just GG. Evil geniuses will win with this Arc Warden strategy. It looks so gross, Jenkins, and so good at the same time.